Do you want to learn how to get pet G prints that look like this? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to share with you my secrets. Let's jump into it. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to talk about printing PEG. I'm going to share some of my secrets and modifications I've made to the JG Aurora A5 here, as well as uh, slicers and slicer settings. Uh, so with that, what I want to do is jump in, and the first thing I want to talk about is the bed. Now, you guys might remember the JG uh, A5 uh, comes with a black diamond bed. That is a glass bed. Uh, some people have, pro have had problems with that. I have not had problems with that, but I decided to be proactive and simply bought this Biltec knockoff material, which I've put over the black diamond bed. This stuff really works great. I've done hundreds of prints on this particular one, and after it cools down, basically a sharp edge of a spatula under here pops the, the prints right off the bed. So really good luck. And again, should this go bad, all I do is take a heat gun, peel it up, put a new one down, and I'm good to go. So um, I have tried release agents such as glue sticks and that, but totally not needed with this, so I've had good luck. I'll put the link to this material down below. Again, it's just some generic knockoff material I've had good luck with. The other piece I've done is I've modified the JG Aurora uh, to use a uh, stainless steel nozzle. Basically, it's just a stainless steel nozzle. Uh, so it's 0.4 millimeter, same size as comes stock on, on the JG, but instead of brass, uh, the stainless is, seems to be working wonders. So the other piece I've added is an E3D V6 uh, insulator on the heat block here. So one of the things, it's a little bit um, different with the nozzle down here versus the e, uh, E3D V6. So I just kind of cut around it. Uh, works great. I've used some fiberglass tape here for extra resiliency in gripping this onto the hot end. Uh, so this works well because I think one of the big things you want to do with PET-G is the uh, tighter tolerances you can keep on hot end temperature, the better off you'll be, especially with stringing and everything else. And this has really proven uh, well. The other piece I've done is I've switched to the Capricorn tubing. You can't see it. It's inside here. This is not an all-metal hot end. I actually prefer the non-all-metal hot ends uh, with the higher temperature. Now, one of the pieces that I've discovered, and I think it's, it's worth noting, is I've, I've switched all my serious machines to the Capricorn tubing. I'll have links to it down below. I, I think it's definitely worth the money because one of the pieces, even if temperature is not getting it per se, uh, duration or duty cycle will because this printer for example prints almost 24 hours a day and what happens is this uh, the PTFE uh, even if I'm printing at PLA temperatures uh, the heat block is going to become less efficient in cooling over time over that many hours because let's face it this printer was not designed and, and basically most hobby printers were not designed to print 24 hours a day so you get heat leaking into that tube and where and breaking down that tube and what happens is it grabs the filament as it passes through and that can be especially problematic for pet g so with that being said great investment uh, the other piece I want to talk about is slicers. I've had far better luck with the KISS slicer than the Cura slicer with PET-G. Uh, I, I think it's some in the hidden commands because now I've ran the same settings in uh, Cura as well as uh, KISS. And you can see this part. And, and I've also done this part uh, like uh, with, with the KISS slicer with better results. It just so happens I had these on the bed, decided to do the video because I am getting such good quality out of this, these modifications and the KISS slicer that I just had to share them with you guys. So the, the piece here that I found is I'm using uh, 6.5 millimeters as a retract distance, 50 millimeters a second as a retract speed, and 200 millimeters a second as travel time. And as you can see here, I've got basically no um, stringing. Now, I've ran the same settings with uh, Cura, and you can see the stringing I get here. So I don't know, really know what it is with Cura. I, I've talked to a couple other folks on the Internet. They're experiencing the same thing with Cura. 
the KISS Slicer, you can download uh, the single extruder version for free. Uh, the Pro version only gives you extra extruders. So I would highly suggest going and getting it. Now on the KISS uh, Slicer, you have to look under destringing for the retraction settings. Uh, it also has some other settings I've started to play around with as far as moving inside walls, wall order, and that kind of stuff, which is helping. But again, the big things, just to recap, are the, um, again, note it's got a Bowden uh, tube. So uh, 6.5 millimeters on the distance, 50 millimeters on the speed, and 200 on the travel. I see, for me, have been magic numbers uh, for this. Uh, again, just to recap too, I think the other big piece that has helped is the uh, stainless steel nozzle and the Capricorn tubing. So hopefully I've helped you out a little bit in printing PETG. Oh, the other thing I want to mention, I almost forgot, is speed of printing. Now I've cut my speed of printing down. The, uh, all these parts were printed at roughly the same speed. I usually go, instead of 60 millimeters, about 30 to 40 depending upon the quality, and that's 30 to 40 millimeters a second, um, depending upon the quality I want to achieve. These were printed about 40. If I really want to do high quality, I'll go down to 30, and then obviously all my numbers from there for initial layer and all that, I will drop down. The other piece is if you're going to use Cura, I do recommend uh, turning on ironing for the top surface. Sometimes you'll get little um, nerds or nodules up here, and that will clean them off. So this, this one, for example, uh, I did ironing. They don't have a function like that in KISS, but you can see how clean this is. The surface layers, and, and I just, I, I can't compliment the, the uh, developers of KISS enough. I, I'm really super impressed with the way that, uh, again, it's working. So hopefully I've helped you out here a little bit with printing PETG. I know this is a popular plastic and gaining more popularity by the day. Uh, there are some challenges with it, but I just want you guys to see, even on a printer like the JG, uh, they're, they're very much overcomable, and you can get some really high-quality prints out. So anyways, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget Swag Shop in the corner, and we'll see you guys in the next video where we talk about something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all